Good evening, everyone. Um, can we please remain standing whilst Councillor Fazakli um, takes prayers? Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather here today to serve our community, those who have entrusted us with this task. Be with us in our deliberations and help us to be wise in the decisions we make for the good of all those who have placed their trust and confidence in our leadership. Give us insight to lead with integrity that our decisions may reflect our desire to use our resources wisely and well to represent all members of our community fairly with outcomes that promote the common good. We seek your wisdom, guidance, courage and strength this evening and in all we do now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Councillor Fazakali. Um, please may we remain standing Oops. whilst we show our respects in the memory of Sir David Amos MP. Thank you, everyone. Uh, please be seated. Thank you. I'd firstly like to say uh, good evening to Councillor Oates and Councillor Banforth. I think we can all give them a, a wave. They can see us. So, the first item of business. Um, do any members have any personal or prejudicial interest to declare? Okay, thank you. Second item, confirmation of minutes. I will propose from the chair that the minutes of the meetings held on the 5th of July and the 20th of July 2021 be confirmed as correct records. I'm happy to second. Thank you. Uh, Mayor's announcements. So, a life is whizzing by for all of us, but if one wanted it to go even faster, take on the mayoralty. I can't believive that an... Oh, I, do you know, I am really rubbish at this voting. Do Sorry. forgive me all. <laughs> I think you're going to do a, spend a year of telling me to uh, take a vote. Can we take a vote on the minutes, everybody, please? Thank you. And then I'll go back to telling you all how quickly this year is whizzing by. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you, Sorry. Alan. Um, so anyway, as I said, it's whizzing by and almost halfway through the year. So since mayor making on the 20th of July and the relaxation of the COVID restrictions, the engagements coming in requesting the mayor to attend are increasing month by month. This is such a positive sign of individuals, groups and the community gaining more confidence in trying to get back to normal. Of course, we're all still acutely aware of COVID still being a grave concern to many and endeavour to take care of ourselves and others. There has been an eclectic mix of engagements from celebrating a lady's 100th birthday, horticultural shows, and very recently, the annual judges' service. Peter Taylor, Daniel Cuff, and the team at Lytham Hall can feel very proud of what they achieved this year giving so much pleasure to the thousands of people who attended the Wonder Hall events and the incredible amount of money that was gifted to the hall. Thank you so much for the VIP care given to the mayoral team and the opportunity I had to host representatives from the charities and those people who are supporting the fundraising this year. The fundraising has been extremely busy with an author afternoon tea, Pete's from Prosecco evening and 80s night, and another author afternoon tea next Tuesday. Particular thanks to the officers and councillors who have attended and supported the events. 
I must say that it really does not matter who is wearing this mayoral chain when, where fundraising is concerned, as it should all be about supporting these worthy charities and community groups. Therefore, I appeal to members that if you are able to either attend and or give raffle prizes, please do, and it will be truly appreciated. I'd like to take the opportunity of mentioning the imminent retirement of the two Pauls, Drinnen and Walker. I know that members and fellow officers are really, really going to miss the both of them. I've worked alongside both of these incredibly hardworking and committed officers on many occasions and have huge respect for their professionalism and passion. Some of the conversations have been tough, but they have always been fair and done their best to do what is best for our communities. I wish them both all the very best for long, happy, exciting and healthy times ahead. So item four on the agenda, Chief Executive's communications. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The only one I have is that um, we will be having a goodbye to Mr. Walker on the 29th of October, which I believe is a Friday. It will be at 2 p.m., probably in this room, um, and members are welcome to come and say goodbye to him at that point, if they wish. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Item five on the agenda, questions from members of the council. Two questions have been received from members of the council. Can I please remind councillors a supplementary question may be asked, <coughs> but it must arise from the answer to the original question. Councillor Gill, would you like to ask your question, please? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question is, uh, at the recent Finance and Democracy meeting, the revised objectives for the Lytham Institute Trust was presented by officers. The objectives were supposed to have been amended following consultation, and the report made particular reference to the fact that the consultation was taken into account in forming the objectives. The public consultation had explicitly requested that the words and other premises be removed. The officer tried to give a rationale as to why these words had not been removed. The Civic Society, the Friends of Lytham Institute, and some councillors requested the removal of these words at the meeting to no avail. <coughs> Even though a vote, which should have been non-political in line with the Charity Commission guidelines, failed to remove them. I reiterate, the objectives were supposed to have been amended following consultation, and the report made particular reference to the fact that consultation had taken into account in forming the objectives. It had not. Can the Council, as sole trustee, please explain as to why the wording of the objectives had not been changed following consultation, and provide members and the public with the rationale as to why the words and other premises has to remain in the objectives. I request that the response be minuted verbatim such that no confusion is left in the minds of the public. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Councillor Gill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm happy to uh, answer the question. The consultation on Lytham Institute has provided many extremely valuable responses, some of which are immediately relevant and some of which will be more relevant a little further down the line. I would like to take the opportunity to thank all those who responded to the consultation and confirm that they were indeed taken into account insofar as they related to the objects of the charity as demonstrated in the recent report to the Finance and Democracy Committee. As the questioner will no doubt be aware, it is incumbent on the trustee of a charitable trust to propose changes to the objects of a charity where the charity's purposes are no longer a practical or appropriate way to meet the need for which it was set up. I think that all members can agree that the objects are set out in the 1917 conveyancy document which presently forms the only governing document of the Trust, are no longer practical or appropriate. That's why we consulted on the proposed new objects clause, which closely follows a charity commission model. It is worth noting that 62% of the respondents to the consultation agreed with the proposed changed objects. To suggest that the objects were supposed to have been amended following consultation is both misleading 
and ignores the results. On the point raised about the premises, the Charity Commission, when it amends charity objects, will have regard, among other things, to the desirability of securing that the new charitable purposes or objects are close to the original purposes and to the spirit of the original gift or purposes. Those original purposes relate to uses of the building of museums, gymnasiums, libraries. They do not relate to the preservation of the building as an object in itself. Indeed, the original wording includes the buildings now or hereafter erected thereon. If the original purposes do not relate to the building as an object, as an object in itself, then any new purposes that make the building itself the focus of the charity would not be aligned to the original purposes. The analysis of the responses are contained in the report to the Finance and Democracy Committee of 7th of October, and I would recommend anybody interested to read it through. Of the, 60, of the 66 responses to the consultation, seven requested removal of the words and other premises. For the reasons mentioned above, the legal officer and the author of the report recommended that they remain. There is clearly confusion between the purposes of the charity and the institute building. And whilst there is a connection between the two, and the suggestions put forward for the use of the building are most welcome, the consultation is only concerned with the former, i.e. the purposes or objects of the charity. In any event, the building is protected by being part of what is called the permanent endowment of the charity. As such, it can't be disposed of without Charity Commission consent. I'm not aware of any proposal to dispose of the building, and as was made clear at the recent Finance and Democracy Committee, our legal officer believes it would be extremely difficult to secure consent to do so. Mr Mayor, it will be the Commission that, makes the, that takes the final decision about what any new charity objects will be. The Commission will be provided with the consultation response document so that they will be able to consider all of the material that the Committee considered. Finally, I would say that the Institute charity should not be a matter of political controversy and it is regrettable that the questioner is seeking to frame it as such. I am happy, Mr Mayor, to provide a copy of this response to the Democratic Services team for distribution to all councillors. Thank you. Thank you for your response, Councillor Buckley. Councillor Gill, would you like to ask a supplementary question? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, no supplementary question, just really to thank the, uh, the councillor for providing such a detailed response, and I look forward to having that distributed to all members. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Councillor Gill. Well done. Councillor Settle, uh, would you like to ask your question this evening? Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can a leader update members on discussions between Lancashire leaders regarding a county deal? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Buckley. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, I am delighted to do that. At full council on the 20th of July last year, which was held on Zoom, the Council agreed to explore the options of a combined authority and local government reorganisation. That commitment was included in the corporate plan. It's reported through Finance and Democracy Committee and is referred to in the report at item 11 tonight. Of course, COVID-19 was already with us, but it could not be foreseen that the pandemic would last at least 18 months and would dominate resources and delivery at all levels of government. Lockdowns and tiering became the all-consuming conversation between Lancashire leaders and the government. Christmas was almost cancelled, you'll recall, and January saw us go into the longest lockdown to date in the pandemic. During this time, Lancaster made a bid to government to join with South Lakeland and Barrow to form a cross-county unitary. 
the leader of Lancashire County Council had written to government to request reorganisation of Lancashire into a mayoral combined authority made up of three unitary authorities, and which was not taken up, I must say. And neither was the request from Blackburn and Darwin Unitary Council, which was made in 2019, progressed, which was to expand their unitary authority to include neighbours and form a Pennine Lancashire authority. Ultimately, it was notable that only three areas of the country, Cumbria, North Yorkshire and Somerset, were invited to proceed with local government reorganisation this time last year. Coming out of the pandemic, the government restated their commitment to devolution, but by a different route, a county deal. The Prime Minister announced in July this year that new county deals will take devolution beyond the largest cities, offering the rest of England the same powers metro mayors have gained over things like transport, skills and economic support. County deals will be bespoke to the needs of individual places, bringing decisions closer to people and places, potentially allowing more places to benefit from strong, high-profile local champions. County deals will give places the tools they need to pilot new ideas, create jobs, drive growth and improve public services. On the same date the government announced new county deals, the government's advisor and now junior minister responsible for delivering this agenda, Neil O'Brien MP, contacted the leader of Lancashire County Council to offer to work with Lancashire to deliver a county deal. So, what can a county deal offer Lancashire and Fylde? The answer is collectively in our hands. Economic development, infrastructure, physical and digital and transport, education and skills, environment and climate change are common asks from all authorities. A county deal can be struck with just the upper tier authority, Lancashire County Council, or the upper tier and unitaries, Blackpool and, and Blackburn, or all 15 authorities, which includes the districts. There is no requirement for a mayor and no desire from Lancashire County Council to dictate planning delivery, which was a major sticking point previously. Proposed governance arrangements include a joint committee of all authorities, which is Lancashire County Council's preference. They involve one member, one vote, a two-thirds majority required for a decision, and a veto if a project affects an area that doesn't agree with it. The Joint Committee of Authorities would have work streams or working groups for the specific areas that are devolved. I am happy for any member to talk to me about these discussions as they develop and of course will bring a proposal to full council if Lancashire leaders wish to pursue this further. It is an opportunity to bring decision making closer to the people we represent and with a mechanism that respects districts and gives them a voice. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Councillor Sattle, have you a supplementary question? Thank you, Mr Mayor. No, I haven't. And thank you to the leader for such a comprehensive response. Thank you. So, item six on our agenda this evening, questions from the members of the public. We have not received any, any questions um, for this meeting. Item 7, invitation to accept the appointment of Mayor 2022-23. And I would like to invite Councillor Roger Small to introduce this item. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. It gives me great pleasure to move this recommendation that the Council invites Councillor Ben Aitkin to accept appointment at the 2022 annual meeting as Mayor for the Borough of Fylde for the municipal year 2022 2023. I do have a seconder, and may I reserve the right to speak on this at a future meeting? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Small. Um, Councillor Little, I believe you're going to second. Yep, I'm uh, happy to second that motion. Thank you. Would any members like to speak to this item? 
all I will say is you're barely in this chair and you're, you're sort of ready to... <laughs> <laughs> you're ready to be ousted. <laughs> Sorry. It just came to mind when I was sitting there this evening. So if nobody would like to speak to this item, um, can we take a vote, please? Thank you. In favour of this, thank you. That's a unanimous um, vote. Councillor Aitken, have you, are you wishing <coughs> to speak after the vote? I did remember to take the vote and you're wishing to speak now. Mr Mayor, I just uh, humbly accept the nomination and I'd like you to know that I am asking Alan Clayton to, me, to be my deputy. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, item eight on the agenda, committee membership. And I would like to invite Councillor Buckley to introduce the item. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, the recommendations are, are laid out before you, uh, members, on page seven. <coughs> and there have been a few changes around from the Conservative positions. Um, Councillor Jane Nixon is standing down as Vice Chairman of Environment, Health and Housing Committee. May I please put on record our thanks to her for a real hard work in, and support in that position and uh, family commitments priorities take her elsewhere and, and entirely oh, understand that and respect that um, but thank you very much to her the report recommends that councillor dixon moves into that committee and takes um, the vice chairmanship uh, there's also a, a move at point three recommendation three for councillor gavin harrison to join the planning committee that will take the place of Councillor Dixon, and also in the Operational Management Committee that Councillor Gill joins in place of Councillor Brickles. And finally, on recommendation five, I understand uh, that the nomination for the Member Development Steering Group is Councillor Mark Bamford, and I'm happy to move all of those recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. And um, the seconder, please, Counsel Councillor Lee. I believe you're standing to second. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yes, happy to. Oh. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I'd just like to, uh, you know, just, okay. uh, just say a few words uh, okay. on behalf of myself and just uh, the demands of environment, health and housing uh, have been extensive with flooding and COVID health and housing and wellbeing. Jane has always been upfront in engaging herself. And I endorse uh, the comments of Councillor Buckley this evening and personally like to thank Jane for being an excellent Vice Chairman. And wish her well for the future. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Trafford. So you weren't seconding it. Am I going back to Councillor yes. Lee to second the item? Okay. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm happy to settle that. Thank you. And Councillor, Councillor Lloyd? No, Sorry, Councillor Small. Ah. It's the name, Roger, isn't it? That's the problem. Um, <coughs> Just very briefly, um, Mr. Mr Mayor, I would like to thank Councillor Brittles for her work on the operational management and I look forward to welcoming Councillor Gill. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Anybody else to speak to this item? No? Thank you. And then can we take a vote on this, please? All those in favour? Thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. So, item 10 on the agenda, <coughs> independent persons allowance. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that eight is nice, isn't it? It, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, you know, I said time was whizzing by. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exit left. Um, so, agenda item nine, schedule of meetings, 2022-23. Councillor Buckley, um, I believe you're going to introduce this item too. Uh, yes, Mr Mayor, so if you're going to move the recommendation on the, on the papers for the schedule of meetings, 22 to 23. Thank you. Councillor Small. Thank you. I second almost got it. my coat out to think we'd finish, Mr <laughs> Mayor, but uh, I'm happy to second that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Would any members like to speak to this item? No, thank you. Then can we take a vote for all those in favour, please? 
and we have a unanimous vote on this item. Thank you. Page 14, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> I've got different notes from you. <laughs> <laughs> So, agenda item 10, independent persons allowance. And I would like to invite Councillor Ellie Gaunt to introduce the item. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, this decision item comes before Council uh, because on the 15th of September, Fylde and Blackpool Independent Remuneration Panel met to consider whether the allowances provided to the independent persons is commensurate with their roles and responsibilities. After deliberation, the panel has concluded that the allowance currently set at £800 per annum is too low, and they recommend that it is increased to £950 per annum, taking effect from the 1st of December 2021. They have also recommended that an annual uplift in line with the Retail Price Index should be applied from the 1st of April 2022 and every year thereafter. The cost of the allowances for the three independent persons is shared equally between Blackpool Council and Fylde Council. Um, <clears throat> the report on the agenda this evening details the roles and responsibilities of the in independent persons, but of particular note is that they are a key component in our standards framework that we have at Council. They provide valuable advice and support to the monitoring officer, sometimes at short notice and they undertake detailed investigations which may require things like gathering evidence, meeting attendance and mediation. Taking, account, taking the above into account, I'm very happy to propose the recommendation as printed on the agenda this evening, and I do have a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Gordon. Um, Councillor Ed Nash to second, I believe. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Happy to second it and reserve the right. Thank you. Would any members like to speak to this item? No. Then can we take a vote on that, please? All those in favour? That's a unanimous vote. Thank you. So item 11 is the, on the agenda is the Corporate Plan 2020-2024, a review uh, for September 2021. And um, Councillor Buckley, please will you stand and introduce this item? Yes, Mr Mayor, thank you. Um, I do move the recommendation to approve the progress made against the corporate plan. This is set out um, for you, members, against every committee area, and it's reported to the committees as well as to full council. Um, so there's an op opportunity for each of the committees to get to grips with uh, the items in, uh, from the corporate plan that affect their particular area. So I simply move the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Councillor Small. Thank you, Mr Mayor. May I uh, stand to second those recommendations and reserve the right to speak if necessary? Thank, Thank you. you. Would any members like to speak to this item on the agenda? No. Nope. Then can we take a vote, please? All those in favour? And I believe that's a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Item 12 on the agenda, the Constitution Amendment for the Planning Committee. And I would like to invite uh, Councillor Fiddler to introduce this item, please. Thank you. I hope I can continue the trend of unanimous decisions made on the items on the agenda. <laughs> Quite a novelty so far. Make the most of it. <laughs> Mr Mayor. As a consequence of the planning committee overseeing the Kirk and Futures programme, I ask council to support the amendment to the constitution which will allow the planning committee to manage, purchase and dispose of land and property. Mr Mayor, I move the recommendation described on page 29 of this evening's agenda. I so move. Thank you, Councillor Fiddler. Um, and I believe Councillor Redcliffe is to stand and second. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. I'm delighted to second this, and I, if I just add that this particular function is becoming particularly pertinent at the time as Kirkham Futures Programme unrolls in Kirkham, which obviously a key component of that strategy 
is the acquisition of buildings. So it will allow, allow the planning committee to actually deliver its responsibilities. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radcliffe. Would any members like to speak on this item? Thank you. Councillor Gaunt. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, just to say briefly that um, this constitutional amendment was considered at the Audit and Standards Committee meeting and it received um, unanimous support. Thank you very much. Would anybody else like to speak on this item? Thank you. Then if we can take the vote, please, all those in favour? Councillor Fiddler, it's a unanimous vote again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Agenda item 13, unfunded revenue budget increase uh, for communications, marketing and public relations resource. And Councillor Buckley, to stand again, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This, this item first came before Finance and Democracy Committee. Uh, as, as an unfunded revenue budget increase as set out and was debated in that forum. Um, the reason for the request to increase resources is, is to increase the team from um, the comms team and certainly to do so in light of the fact that we have benefited, as members will know, benefited an awful lot by government funding through COVID, um, which has done a, done a lot to supplement what we can do um, in terms of comms and marketing, and that funding is coming to an end. And so um, the reason for bringing this is from Finance and Democracy is to ask Council to approve an unfunded revenue budget increase. Um, the amounts are set out for you there, 54,084. And then also as at recommendation number two is a further £15,000 for provision of additional communication specialist services. So I move the recommendations, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. And I believe Councillor Settle is standing to second that. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm very happy to second that. <coughs> Thank you. Would any members like to speak to this item? Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Collins. Thank you. Yes, uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, at that F&D meeting on the 13th of September, uh, Councillor Clayton proposed an amendment for a further recommendation. And what he proposed was that a, further, that a policy protocol is adopted in line with the Department for Communities and Local Governments document, Code of Recommended Practice and Local Government Authority Publicity. And that all members of the Council and officers are made aware of, that, of its content. I don't think Councillor Clayton was aware that the uh, council have a strategy. It's very hard to find it on the internet. I couldn't find it. Um, I requested it from the legal officer. Two weeks later, he sent me a link and said it was on the intranet. Uh, so it's not really uh, that visible. Uh, subsequent to the meeting, uh, the officer, uh, the author of that report, confirmed that the council is legally obliged to um, follow the code of recommended practice. Um, but at that meeting, um, all members of the leading group voted against that amendment. So in order to regularise things, um, I'd like to propose a, a further uh, recommendation to those on the order papers tonight. Um, and I propose that the filed telecommunications and marketing strategy is reviewed and adopted in line with the Department for Communities and Local Governments document, Code of Recommended Practice on Local Government Authority Publicity, and that all members of the Council and officers are made aware of its content. I do have it written down. I Thank you. Can I was just going to ask if you have a seconder, Councillor Clayton. And if you could just pass Councillor Collins to Sharon the, um, the recommendation that you've composed. Councillor Clayton, thank um, you. Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I stand to second this amendment, and I do so to try and help to remove any confusion about the inclusion of the policy 
which is the Code of Recommended Practice on Local Authority Publicity, which, despite an amendment that Councillor Collins referred to, to add the code, was voted against at the Finance and Democracy meeting on September the 13th. It is now, except it has now been included in the Council website. And Mr Mayor, all I'm trying to seek is confirmation from this Council for full acceptance of this code. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Clayton. Um, is there anybody who would like to speak to this amendment? No. Um, Chief Exec, can you read this amendment out, please? I can, Mr Mayor. Thank you. The amendment is that the filed telecommunication strategy is reviewed and adopted in line with the Department for Communities and Local Governments document, the Code of Recommended Practice on Local Government Authority Publicity, and that all members of the Council and officers are made aware of its content. Thank you. Um, Car I think Councillor Buckley has shown that she would like to speak to this uh, amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a, am I, do you have the right to yes. reply some more on, on this? Yeah, you, you debate do. on the amendment now. Debating on the amendment. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's absolutely fine. Um, I just want to try and help some, mm -hmm. clear up some of this <coughs> confusion. Um, because, as has been stated, there was a, a, an amendment put forward at Finance Democracy that said that a policy stroke protocol is adopted in line with the code of recommended practice. And what I thought was made clear at the Finance and Democracy Committee meeting, but clearly it wasn't, was that um, there was already such a, a strategy, policy document underway. In fact, I know it's been written now. There was already a, a, such a strategy underway. And as the Chief Executive made clear that we are, we are incumbent, it's incumbent upon us to follow the code and we do follow the code um, in any event. So the reason it was voted down was because it was superfluous. We already had a strategy, a policy, or were underway with a policy. Nobody was hiding that policy from anyone and that we follow the code. So there was no, there was no grounds for any confusion. So I don't understand why it's trying to be rehashed this evening. Um, but I have checked, and there is a filed communications and marketing strategy 2021 to 24 already in place. And in fact, the code of practice on local authority publicity is at Appendix 1 to that very policy document. So again, what's being asked for has in fact already been delivered and we don't need to have a further amendment to do so, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Um, as nobody wished to speak, um, Councillor Buckley has summed up the <laughs> amendment. Sorry, Councillor Collins. Just point of clarification, uh, Mr Mayor. That being? That, uh, uh, Councillor Buckley says that Appendix 1 was in place and that vote took place at the Finance and Democracy Committee. The officers confirmed that it wasn't. So to um, remove any confusion, um, that's why we've done it tonight, that's why we've proposed a further recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Collins. I've just been advised that there is uh, no such thing as point of clarification. Okay. So, Councillor Buckley has summed up on the... Councillor Buckley... A point of personal explanation, please. You're allowed, <laughs> you're allowed to do one of those. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Collins is mishearing what I said. I said that I have now seen that there is a filed communication marketing strategy 21-24... There is an appendix to that. Appendix 1 is the Code of Practice on Local Authority Publicity. And I said at the time of the Finance Democracy Committee, I was aware and stated that the policy was underway. Um, and that was, that was as far as I said. So again, it is not 
the Conservatives misleading council or committee, it is the opposition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Um, everyone's had an opportunity to speak to this item. Councillor Buckley has summed it up. Um, so we're now taking the vote on the amendment. So is everybody clear on what the amendment was, or would you like the Chief Executive to read it out again? Are you all okay on that? So please can we take a vote on the amendment, all those in favour? Thank you. All those against? Thank you. Um, eight votes, four, 32 votes against the amendment. We now go back to the substantive motion. So would anybody like to speak um, on the substantive motion? Thank you. Councillor O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I uh, actually, it's not. <laughs> It's really a request, if that's possible, in that could um, we please... Sorry. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. I want some diversity training. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, could... I was wondering if the, um, the new policy that... Uh, Councillor Buckley has referred to could be circulated to all members, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Rourke. I'm sure that can be arranged. Okay, thank you. So now, if there's nobody else to speak to this substantive motion, um, can we take the vote on it, please? All those in favour? Thank you. That would... Or any against? Okay, it's clear, clearly carried. Thank you, everyone. So, item 14 on the agenda, exclusion of the public and press. Councillors, I would like to move that we exclude the public and press from the meeting at this point. This is in accordance with the provisions of section 100A, brackets 4, of the Local Government Act 1972. Members, please note this is solely for item 16 on your agenda, as item 15 has been withdrawn. Any members connected remotely will also be excluded from this part of the meeting in accordance with the remote attendance procedure rules. I move that the business to be discussed at item 16 is exempt information as defined by paragraph 1 of Schedule 12A of the Local Government Act 1972. And Councillor Little yeah. is going to settle that. Settle I'm that, happy sorry. to second that. 